right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over a pretty interesting and different type of story that was sent from a subscriber. This one, a guy sounds like he's in his late 40s, and he shares his story about events that happened, I guess, about 25 years ago, a little longer than that, when in his very early 20s or late teens, he went down an interesting path and became a monk, like a monk in an ashram and was traveling the world, learning a lot of things, spiritual teachings and all that, and eventually led him to, with that knowledge down the path that he became quite, let's just say the type of guy nowadays that in many ways I hope you guys become, both in your personal lives, professional lives, and all that. Essentially, no nonsense, understanding human nature, my way or the highway, and the magical power they had on the women. In terms of pretty much take or leave it attitude, if there's any BS, there's the door, or I'm out of here quickly, he's the leader, that type of thing, and of course they're chasing after him. And so that'd be a very good one to go over here, just to, again, backing up a lot of things I talk about in this channel here. And I might add, you're going to see that he was married and divorced early, di married and divorced early on, and that reinforced a lot of things that he learned and things I talk about. And nowadays, you're going to see in the future, fast forward in time, guy's doing great, he's married, got, got a loving, loyal, submissive wife kid, all that, he's doing great. So that'd be a, an interesting one, because let's be honest, how many stories are covering guys were a monk for a while, and, 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 and you know, learning very different things on human nature, as well as spiritual teachings and all that. That was an interesting one. So, starts off, says here, hey SSM, I know you're doing well, and watch your videos almost regularly. Here's a story that may be at least a bit entertaining for you, and you decide whether or not to present it further. Well, you're in luck, kind sir, because I'm going to present it further. My story starts back in the 90s when I was a teenager. I was interested in long-term relationships and always attracted to quiet and timid girls. Hey, who wasn't? <laughs> we, we appreciate silence. And let's be honest, it's the quiet, timid ones that are usually the freaks in the bedroom. Uh, regardless of my inter-fantasies, I always knew not to pick a hot, empty girl with ridiculous expectations. I knew they would find their money man and then leave him for the next greener guy. So I never really tasted the toxic nectar, <clears throat> nectar of being with the hottest public property in town. And my romantic life was mostly peaceful, with just a couple serious long-term relationships until I was 19 years old. In other words, he learned at an early age, don't get in relationships with the 9s or 10s. I say that all the time, guys. They are for fun, friends of benefits, hookups. If you guys can get a 9 or a 10... You know, <clears throat> body-wise, looks-wise, personality, they're usually like a one or two. Relationships are six, seven, and eights. And eights, you got to definitely, that's a case-by-case -case basis, and you need to definitely be on your toes. So at that time, I was with this girl for almost three years and planned on getting married as soon as we finished college. Smack! How the hell would you want to do that? But then I met a group of monks living in my city. This is when I said this story is interesting. I came to their invitation and was privy to hearing some of the most incredible knowledge displayed at their program. So I decided that I wanted in. So in just a few months, I started practicing their way of life at home. What do you mean practicing their way of life at home? Were you suddenly becoming celibate? I'm sure your girlfriends didn't like that. Were you? Did you shave the top of your head like those medieval friars and sat there and meditated? I mean, I'm messing with you, but I'm just curious. A few months later, I moved in leaving behind my previous life, family, friends, my band, guitar player, my girlfriend, and my lifestyle, sex, drugs, and the rock and roll. All to take up a mon monastic training and that included very early rising, meditation, sp spiritual work, and self-improvement. Lots and lots of guided self-improvement based on wisdom that is more than 5,000 years old. Holy crap, this is why I'm doing this story because this is interesting. Guys, you just never know with people. My girlfriend was supportive at first, but when things started getting more serious in my spiritual practice, she bailed. Well, you know what, bro? I actually can't blame her because that's not what she signed up for in the relationship. If all of a sudden you were this one guy one day, and then a few months later you were going into monk mode, if you will, and eventually left and all that, I mean, you can't blame her. You know, it's just you have completely different people. He says, huh. And this philosophy confirms their nature and expands the reasons way beyond today's YouTube. Yeah, it's their nature, but also you changed. So I, I'm actually, you know, unless there's more to this, I can't entirely blame her, man. Here we go with the sirens. 
The stuff that you guys are watching on channels like this is just surface knowledge, but just how deep this goes would scare most men away from even hearing it. Not that it's negative, uh, knowledge never is, but it is deep and that may scare many away. So there I was in the monastery, he says an ashram, practicing full celibacy in my, in my mind as well, and traveling with other monks to different places in the world for five years. Holy crap, what an adventure. Now, was this part of the plan when she left, or did that became the new life after she left as a reaction to that? But I still think she, you guys broke up because just you stopped being the same person here. I'm going to be fair here, and I'm going to defend a girl when I think that the guy, you know, you get my point. So I was trained as a leader and a teacher and was in charge of a group of six to ten monks in our studies, practice, and travels. A normal part of monastic life is traveling and spreading knowledge. That, that period sort of ended when I got married to a woman from our congregation. Knowing well that what marriage brings on my shoulders, I did it for various reasons, but to cut this short, maybe for another time. She was a fire-breathing dragon with a uh, cornucopia of thick red flags, and I saw them all. Fire-breathing dragon, I like that. Well, then why the hell did you marry her? Was, was the ego there, like... Uh, with all my knowledge and superpowers, oh, she's not going to get one on me. But to cut things short, she was overtly persistent, and since our marriages are based on spiritual values, I finally yielded. In other words, you caved to her demands and bullshit. Smack! Guess you should have spent more time with the traveling around learning shit. This ended my celibacy, and with my wife and a few monks, I went to the U.S. to answer a few invitations that I had received over the past few years. They want us to move our activities to Los Angeles, California, and so we uproot our lives in Europe and move to L.A. My wife, a few other monks from our group, and myself. So this is interesting. You, you mentioned ashram, so obviously you're not. I'm not thinking of like you know Catholic monks or something like that. So obviously in this religion, you you could be married. I, I guess I have no fucking clue much about any of this. It says Los Angeles was a dream city back in 1999 when we arrived. I loved it all, except for the pollution. Um, I don't know if I can buy that Los Angeles was a dream city in 1999. When my parents came to Los Angeles, Southern California, in the mid-60s, my they said back then, yeah, California, Southern California was, was fantastic. That's why they moved there. And in the 70s, and things started changing in the 80s, and by the late 80s when my dad retired, he saw the writing on the wall and said, I'm out of here. And then we trekked across Shanghai all the way to small town Pennsylvania but but if you were happy in 1999 that's great and maybe I'm wrong you know any California guys that are there but probably conservative guys let me know about 1999 in LA anyway my wife got pregnant soon afterwards and our only son was born in the year 2000 our marriage fell apart in 2005 well I'm sorry that happened dude but that's what happens when you marry a fire breathing dragon as I cannot tolerate the constant abuse of a sick woman. This is another story for another day, and I will skip it. Also, on this channel, you have also told similar horror stories plenty of times. Bad women always behave the same. So finally we split up, and I moved to a very close location to make it easier on our boy. And it did. I would highly recommend to fathers who are forced to abandon a burning ship to move to a walking distance of 5 to 10 minutes so your child doesn't feel the separation so hard. You can always be there in no time, and they know it. Well, that's good, man. I'm sure it was not easy being so close to the fire-breathing dragon, but you were there for your boy. You were being strong for him, and as any good parent or father would be. So by that time, I decided that I would never again fall prey to a bad woman, so I snipped my chances of being tortured by any future mothers of my children. Well, one of the easiest ways to not fall prey to the bad women or to not get married again, and if you're going to do relationships, you always have one foot out the door, and also being extremely, gaining a lot of knowledge, if you will, and putting it into practice. And she knows from the get-go that if she crosses the line, you're out of there. And there are, contrary to what a lot of guys think, there are still some good gals out there with traditional values, loyalty, and good things like that, and are, and are loving and kind. But sadly, in 2024, that number is becoming rarer and rarer. But I do not think that all are fire-breathing dragons. However, I do think that all could be fire-breathing dragons if uh, things don't go too well and you act like a pussy. 
He says here, our son was enough for me, and I spent his whole childhood being with him and playing every day of his life. No moments were missed. In fact, I made sure I replaced whatever his mom was lacking, as my job was a freelancer and I could do it even in Los Angeles. Our divorce was a liberation for me. I decided to cash in on, on it on my training and put it in a sport mode to see what results I could get by applying my spiritual knowledge and practice to my future relationships, both romantic and otherwise, friends, business, etc. And it worked miracles. As soon as I separated and before all the papers were settled, I had, I had crazy hot women suddenly appearing in my life, wanting mostly the SEX and fun that I offered. I'm going to go on this, that he's being accurate here, not exaggerating things a little bit, but okay, I don't, I'm, I'm guessing at that point maybe you were late 20s, maybe 30s, good looking guy. I'm sure that the fact that you traveled the world and had a lot of interesting stories to tell made you very interesting to women. So the, I, I'm sure that didn't, that certainly helped your situation attracting chicks. And you probably gained a lot of confidence from your travels and adventures. Again, very attractive to chicks. Naturally, I was selective as per my previous training and knowledge, so I chose only whatever pleased me. I decided that I would only be my—I I would be only myself and not pretend to be otherwise, just to appeal to other women's standards. Uh, I was the frame, and they are only a small part of it. So, in other words, you're being authentic, and women like guys that are authentic. They're not trying to be pleasers and full of shit. Nice guys are pleasers. Nice guys put on the act. Yeah, don't get me wrong, bad boys Chad and Tyrone could put on the act, but bad boys, they don't give a shit. They are who they are. They march to the beat of their own drum, if you will. The only act they put on is like, oh, yeah, baby, I want a relationship. Ha, 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 ha. That type of thing. My priorities were my spiritual practice, my family, friends, and music, and then some other stuff, and then women. Aha. Uh -huh. This is what I tell you. Put everything out. Put the gals dead last. Put what you want, your passions. He said right here, spiritual practice, friends, family, music. Again, they're used to the guys kissing their butts. This is another reason why, obviously, they were interested in you. And I will tell them that from the very start. Blunt and bold, looking straight in their eyes and proclaiming my domain and my laws. There you go. Also, the bright neon sign, there's the door, was always displayed. And I made sure they could see it. And again, either they can leave or I'm going to leave. I don't have time for bullshit. So I believe this guy when he said he was getting women based on all these things. It says, boy, did that change the dynamics of my relationships. Everything you guys are discovering now is absolutely true. And moreover, it is a part of greater knowledge based on ancient cultures. I know, uh, I know you know this as well, but there. I can confirm it as a student and teacher of ancient wisdom. Well, I, I would like to hear more in depth specifically what the ancient wisdom is in terms of what practice, what a form of religion, that type of thing. But anyhow, well, here's the reason why it works. He talked about ancient wisdom. Human, human nature is human nature. It hasn't changed in 5,000 fucking years and ain't going to change another 5,000 years. Although we'll probably be gone by then. We'll destroy each other or there'll be like a rise of the machines Terminator situation here or something. He says, by the way, when I divorced, I was 32 years old. So yeah, uh, those are the holy years for us men. All right. A man's prime begins in his 30s. And if he has his shit together and has this wisdom based on either learning from others or, or life experience, he's doing well for himself, a take-it-or-leave-it attitude, yeah, that's his prime. So after my divorce, I had only three relationships, none of which carried a girlfriend title. Just friends with whatever you want to call it. If you like my company, call me. After I'm gone, expect nothing. If I come, I come. And I'm sure you did a lot of coming. So yeah, they... They knew darn well you were that guy that they could have fun with and had the challenge to try to, to lock you down. That's what happens with the bad boys. And they did love my company. I learned some tricks about women's bodies and minds that turn their minds off for days, if you know what I mean in bed. Let's not get carried away, brother. I, I'm sure you learned some of that Kama Sutra crap over there and all that, and, and you were had a, an impact on their minds. Well, let's not get ridiculous here and get yourself up, you know, propping yourself up here. They became a very different person if you know how to give them that pleasure beyond what they can tolerate. This keeps them in a state of trance for a long time. But if your sexual prowess is only a small portion of your skills, she is prepared to do anything to have a bit of your company. Well, I will agree that if, if a guy has a woman's mind and he has your soul, there pretty much isn't anything she's willing to do to make him happy. 
She may not be a big fan of BJ's, but if she sees that guy as a prize and he has her mind and soul, believe me, it's five BJ's a day. She may not like it, but she's going to do it to, to make him happy. That's why in these stories when these guys talk about how they found out that their wife back in college was doing everything you can possibly think of that was on Pornhub, but with them, they're getting the basic bare minimum. It's because they don't do it for her. Believe me, but those guys back in the day, Chad and Tyrone, when she was chasing their validation, they do, she's doing everything for them right here. Sharing with other women, no problem, not even a question. They don't want to lose something they don't know they can't find so easily outside. So two of these women were rich, one crazy rich. Well, it's Los Angeles, Southern California. You're going to encounter a lot of wealthy people. At one point, they all found out I was with all three of them, sometimes in one day, and one of them freaked out on me. Hey, they knew who you were. The other two just told me, you bad boy, and took their clothes off immediately. One of them brought me a brand new, bought me a brand new motorcycle a few days after she found out about the other two. In other words, they're rich. They know who you are. They know you're the player, but they want to have their fun with you. And she, she's rich. Money's not a matter. So she, she knew she had competition. Bought you shit to keep you around. How nice is that? <clears throat> make it make sense, but it makes sense. The one who got angry with me thought she would break up with me, but I said there's nothing to break up. Three days later, just as I was testing my new bike, she called and asked for me to be her sex partner with no strings attached, and I said no. <laughs> like, nah, I'm busy with the other two. But right there, take her leave an attitude. Hey, we're nothing. Next thing you know, she's chasing after you. I was happy with the other two Beverly Hills types, and one of them was absolutely a nympho. Couldn't keep her body off me. That was the first time I had to say, stop with the sex. Well, do it later, not now. When women are hot for you, they can't keep their fucking hands off you. It's the truth. She was rich, so she paid for everything. She bought me all kinds of things, even though I was not very comfortable with that lifestyle. Well, you said they're both rich. I'm curious. I'm. Were they married? And then you were banging married women, which ain't cool. Or are they simply just, you know, this is Southern California, and you, you never know. And they're from wealthy families, and they're trust fund brats or something like that. I accepted some of the gifts and enjoyed being pampered every time she wanted to see me. I even drove her BMW for a month, and she said, Anything you want, baby. Above all things, they enjoyed the way I talked to them. That is another story. There's a whole art to how to talk to women to make them absolutely crave your company and willing to go any distance with you. Well, all right. It's all about how you act. A proper verbal interaction will keep any woman in a state of willful but semi-conscious trance, which will enable her to follow your lead, treat you with kindness, and all other normalities. Well, again, it boils down to having their mind, having their soul. And this is what Chad and Tyrone and the bad boys know exactly how to do. Anyway, regardless of the money, I actually proposed to the very rich woman but under the condition that she followed me back to Europe, back to my country. I decided to leave the U.S. just as Obama took over. I wouldn't say took over, it was just eight years. I predicted very successfully that America would take a turn for crazy, and I left. Yeah, there's a lot of crazy out there, although some probably label me crazy. And you guys watching me crazy, too. So we're all crazy together. My ex and my son also left, and my uh, ex never learned to love America, so she was ready to go back whenever I decided. When I got back to my country, I told the rich woman to follow me if she decided, but otherwise, bye-bye. In the next two years, she visited a few times, but there was no sure decision in her mind, so I ended that relationship. Well, that relationship was never going to be long-lasting, you can tell. I'd like to know what country you're from. I'm sure your accent from whatever country you come from helped with your getting women. Immediately after that, I met my current wife of 14 years, with whom I've had an amazing relationship full of love, respect, and mutual servitude. Wonderful. So Chad here had his fun. But when the difference is with guys, guys can be, let's be honest, man horse for a while. And when we decide we're ready to settle, the difference is we can still pair bond, you know, and actually treat the gal, if she's a good one, if it's reciprocated with love, loyalty, and all that, if the guy decides to. But with women, it's been proven they can't pair bond after so many partners and all that. It's interesting. We have the same spiritual practice, and she gladly follows my lead and mission because I do have one. I've had it since the end of the monastery training, and my wife has to be on board with it 100%. Well, again, she knows that, uh, you know, you're way of the highway. And you obviously treat her well, but she knows 
obviously not to cross you, that you have options, that you can get other women. I'm sure probably something that attracted her in the first place was that other women liked you. <clears throat> now listen to this as I wrap this story up. But the reason I've had such a nearly perfect relationship for the past 14 years is because I never, never yielded to her womanly charms, tricks, lies, and deceits, most of them subconscious. But nevertheless, I managed to stay on top from the very first moment. Right. He never yielded. In other words, he never caved when testing and BS was going to cut. Even the best relationships, she is going to test, guys. And oftentimes, if it's a really good relationship, it's just little shit. But when a guy starts failing those little annoying tests, that's when those tests become bigger. And let's be honest, we're all human beings and we can all have bad days. So if she, start, she takes, it, takes it out on you because she had a bad day at the office and you check her, not cool. Don't take your shit out of me. I'm here to listen, but don't take your fucking shit out of me. You check her on those occasions. Okay. Keeps her in line. But if you just take it, that's when things start going downhill. I never let go of the rain, and I make sure those reins are comfortable. I lead, she follows, but most of the time, you don't notice it because it's all voluntary, driven by the intense desire to maintain a good thing as the most important task in our intimate relationship. However... I will testify that men cannot achieve this without constant diligence, oversight, corrections, and above all, always reacting at the first sign of trespassing on her behalf. In other words, nip it in the butt. When there's bullshit, you nip it in the butt. You don't just pick and choose and be passive when, if you're being disrespected, tested in a disrespectful way or whatever. In this way, you don't have to be rude because it's still not a big deal. However, it stops now. A firm hand with soft emotion makes it hard to object. Also, you have to be at least five times smarter, ten times more spiritual, and twenty times more knowledgeable than her. She must know without you saying it. Well, I agree with all that, but you know what? That's a lot of fucking work. And a lot of guys out there are probably like, I don't need to deal with this shit. I don't want to have to spend my t all my time on my guard and being five times smarter, ten times more spiritual, and twenty times more knowledgeable. That sounds great and all, but that's a lot of goddamn work. I could be happy on my own. But for your relationship, guys, he has a very good point. Being aware and nip it in the bud. But it gives me it gives inner pleasure and value to my being here as a man. This is more than enough to walk with my head up high and smile on my face. Well, I bet. If you need me to expand on some of these parts of the story, let me know. Otherwise, thank you anyway. Keep up the good work, man. Well, bro, that is an interesting story. That's why I did it. It is different. But you're seeing guys from the perspective of a guy who went on a different path, like I said in the beginning, and learned a lot of things and learned what happens when you have a my way or the highway, no strings attached, doesn't give a crap attitude, you know? And they know that either they, the line is crossed and there's the door for them or you're going to walk as well as all these other things I talk about on this channel right then and there. I do think, like a lot of guys, they definitely make themselves look pretty good when they talk about the bedroom and stuff like that, and we can all laugh about that. But the main point of these stories is you can see real-life examples of the things that I talk about so often. So I thought it would be a good one to go over here, and that's why I did it. So I appreciate that, bro, and I wish you well. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Make sure you like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.